This is the VW ID Buzz. It's a brilliant new electric car, and it is, we think, the best new car that's been launched in the last 12 months. In this review, we're going to explain exactly what makes it so good, and we're also going to look at how it compares to all of its rivals. But first, if you want to see lots more new car reviews like this, then make sure you subscribe to our channel and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. So this is the successor to VW's iconic Type 2 camper from the 50s. And like the Type 2, the Buzz has been designed to transport family and friends on holidays and other various lifestyle adventures. But the question is, is it up to the task? Well, it's certainly big enough. Now, this isn't technically a van. It's actually based on similar underpinnings to what you'll find under the ID3 and the ID4. But even though it might not technically be a van, it is still absolutely massive. So you have loads of legroom, you have loads of headroom. Anyone over six foot will still be able to sit back here pretty comfortably. And on top of all that, another great thing is having this flat floor all the way through the car. So if you want to sit three adults side by side in this nice wide interior, you can do so pretty comfortably, especially because not only is it wide, but there's no central hump down here to get in the way of people's feet. Another good thing is that these windows are really nice and big to let in a load of light. It is a shame though that the windows don't actually lower. It is still very airy and relaxing in the back though, particularly because you can slide and recline the rear seats as standard. There's lots of helpful storage compartments up front. On the dashboard, you've got this area just above the glove box. You've also got these hidden cup holders down here. There's some wireless phone charging that's in another compartment next to the steering wheel. And this center console thing, you can actually lift up and remove out of the car entirely if you want to. Storage in the back is great like it is in the front. So you've got massive door bins, you've got another compartment higher up there as well. On the back of the front driver's seat here, you have a pouch for your smartphone. There's another pouch at the bottom of the seat and you have USB-C chargers along with this handy picnic tray, which is helpful, but it's a shame it feels a little bit flimsy. These sliding rear doors are a brilliant practical feature with the Buzz because particularly with this type of car, it's great having such easy, wide access into the rear seats back here. And it's also helpful if you're parked very closely next to something because you don't have to worry about swinging open the rear door and hitting whatever you're parked next to. And you can also get these electrified if you pay extra. The practical side of things only gets better when it comes to the boot because as you can see, it is absolutely huge. In total, you've got 1,121 litres of storage. So this really is significantly better than any other electric car or electric SUV that you might be comparing it to. And because of this boxy van-like styling, it means it's a very easy, simple shape. So stuffing loads of things in the back is no trouble at all. For the record, you can fit 16 of these carry-on size suitcases in the back. To give you some perspective, that's twice as many as you'll fit in a BMW iX3, and even a Range Rover only fits 10. This buzz comes with this platform that you can see here, which raises the boot floor and means that when the middle row is down, it all lies very flat indeed, which is very helpful if you're loading long items into the back. And it also means technically you could put an air mattress in the back here. It also gives you loads of underfloor storage as well, which goes right the way through to that middle row there. This is an optional extra though on the entry level trim. You only get it as standard on the upper trim level. Just bear in mind that without this platform, when you flatten the middle row, there is a big step up from the boot floor to the middle row, which just makes it slightly harder if you're trying to push things all the way through from the back of the buzz to the front. But all things considered, with loads of room for people and luggage, the buzz is pretty much the ultimate box on wheels. It's not just practicality that impresses in this interior. Up front, you have a fantastic driving position. So especially with these nice, comfortable armrests that you get on style trim, it's almost like you're sat in a Range Rover, almost. You're definitely much higher up off the ground than you are in lots of other electric cars and some electric SUVs like the Jaguar I-Pace, the Tesla Model Y, you're much higher in the ID Buzz. And you have fantastic visibility in this car as well. There's so much glass, there's very thin pillars. And this is quite a big car, but from the driver's seat, it's very easy to judge the dimensions of the Buzz. And an incredibly tight turning circle of 11.1 meters, which is tighter than the turning circle in a Tiguan, 
also helps make the Buzz feel far more manoeuvrable and compact in town than you'd expect. You also get front and rear parking sensors and a reversing camera as standard. But the major drawback in here, and unfortunately this goes for lots of other new VW products, is the technology. So on the steering wheel here, you can see you've got this now common, unfortunately, touch sensitive panel for these buttons where they're quite easy to trigger accidentally just by holding the steering wheel while also being quite difficult to deliberately use accurately. So that's not very good. Worse than that is this rubbish touch bar slider thing to control the air conditioning, which isn't even backlit. So at night, you just have to get used to where everything is because you won't be able to see anything that you're doing. The touchscreen system itself, this is the bigger 12 inch screen, which is an optional extra. You get a 10 inch screen as standard. To be honest, we wouldn't bother going for it because no matter what screen size you go for, you still are stuck with some pretty basic software that VW gives you for the infotainment system. The main problem with it is just how confusingly it's all laid out, but you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Now, in terms of the quality in here, this is quite an expensive electric car, which we're gonna talk more about later, and you wouldn't exactly describe it as luxurious, but it does all feel very durable, very robust, and yes, there are lots of plastics around, but they feel like relatively good quality plastics. There's also lots of different color schemes you can choose from inside too. And all the bits of the interior that you're gonna to touch regularly, like the steering wheel especially, feel suitably upmarket. So inside, the extremely practical buzz is clearly up to the job of holiday transportation. But being fully electric, for lots of people, the real test is whether it can still manage the same long distance journeys and adventures that the Type 2 was famous for. And the good news is that you should absolutely be able to do that with the Buzz. It gets an 82 kilowatt hour battery with a usable capacity of 77 kilowatt hours, and that's good for a claimed WLTP official range of up to 260 miles. But of course, like every electric car, that official range is gonna be pretty much impossible to achieve in real world driving conditions. So with the Buzz, expect something more like 230 miles when the weather's good, or 180 miles when the weather is especially cold like it is today. Now, that range isn't particularly exceptional. There are a lot of other electric cars that will be able to go further on a full charge than the ID Buzz. But the range that you get from this car certainly isn't terrible. And like any other EV with a little bit of forward planning, those long journeys and family getaways should still be perfectly achievable with little drama. That does though also rely on the charging network you'll have to use when you're out and about. You should be able to top up your buzz quicker than other electric VWs because the charging speed has been upped from 130 kilowatts to a maximum 175 kilowatts. If you can find a charger capable of such speeds, you'll be able to get a 10 to 80% charge in 30 minutes. From a more common 50 kilowatt charger, you're looking at just over an hour for the same charge. With a seven kilowatt home wall box, it's likely to take 12 hours to go from flat to full. Where the buzz does disappoint though, is with the efficiency that it offers. So it's got quite a big battery, but because it has that boxy van-like styling, that's why the range seems a little bit more disappointing than the ID3 and the ID4, which get the same battery, but can travel further. So not only is this heavier, but it's less aerodynamic as well. So, but will you enjoy those miles between charges? Is this a good car to drive? Well, to be honest, it's quite difficult not to enjoy driving this thing. And that's not because of things that you can't measure, like the charm and the personality that you might think this car offers. It's because you have a fantastic driving position, like we said earlier, and it's really comfortable as well. So even if you go for optional 21 inch alloys, this is still a comfortable electric car, which has a nice bit of waft, but still decent body control. The bump absorption is impressive as well. And it's good to drive. Okay, you're not gonna drive this around the Nürburgring and be amazed and an iX3 and an iPace are much more agile things, but this is grippy. It's got nicely weighted, accurate steering. It's all just very pleasant. The performance that you get in the Buzz is pretty good, especially up to 40 miles an hour. It feels really quick, especially off the line. But there are other electric cars that are quicker than this. So you have a 201 brake horsepower electric motor, which drives the rear wheels. It's the same motor, the same kind of setup that you get in an ID3 and in an ID4 as well. And you'll do 0 to 60 miles per hour in around about 9.5 seconds. 
Now, if you compare that to a Model Y or a BMW iX3 or a Jaguar I-Pace, they're in a different league when it comes to performance. But the buzz does still feel powerful and strong enough. Certainly, it will manage motorway journeys with little fuss. So, if you do want to buy an ID Buzz, how should you spec one? Well, the lineup is going to expand in the future with a GTX performance version and an even longer seven seat version. And there's also going to be bigger batteries on the way as well. But for now, there's just one 77 kilowatt hour battery you can get with the Buzz. And there are two trim levels that you can choose from. Entry level life is still very well equipped. You get heated seats, adaptive cruise control, but we'd actually go for the top spec style trim because it adds things like 20 inch alloys, an electric tailgate, and also this multi-flex board as well. So it's worth the extra. Now we don't normally recommend going for expensive special paint, but this is an exception because yes, it's a little bit pricey, but the two-tone color scheme that you can get with the Buzz really transforms the look of the car and harks back to the look of the original Type 2. Aside from that, the only other option you might want to consider is a three-pin socket, which you can add to the inside of the car. There is an optional Assistance Package Plus, which adds blind spot monitoring and a self-steering function to keep you in the center of your lane on faster roads, but even without it, this is an incredibly safe car. The Buzz was awarded five stars out of five for safety by Euro NCAP and scored particularly high for child occupant crash protection. None of this comes cheap though, and with a starting price not far off £60,000, you may see the Buzz as an expensive option. But the fact is that it's cheaper than lots of equivalent electric SUVs like the I-Pace and the iX3, and the Buzz also has one major trump card it can play on its rivals. This being such a hugely desirable car, it's predicted to hold onto its value considerably better than all of the rivals that it's up against, which also means that monthly PCP finance deals are pretty competitive. Some remakes of icons can just feel like hollow marketing exercises with little substance. The ID Buzz is absolutely not like that. This is a fantastic new electric car, which brilliantly reimagines the Type 2 camper for the modern era. It's very pleasant to drive, hugely practical, and it's cheaper than you might think if you're buying on finance. So that is why the Buzz is a brilliant new electric car and our 2023 car of the year. For much more reviews like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car and tell us in the comments below what you think of the Buzz.